I'm Rob Schaefer, one of the co-founders of American Freedom Distillery and Horse Soldier Bourbon. And today, we're gonna to talk about how to drink whiskey. You're saying to yourself, Rob, I already know how to drink whiskey, right? I just drink it. And you're exactly right. That is what you're supposed to do. Just drink it and enjoy it. But the issue is this. We actually live right now in the golden age of whiskeys. There are so many new craft distillers. There are so many great whiskeys out there that there's just too many things to try right now. And so what comes up is you always have the issue of, you know, what's the best whiskey and what's the right way to drink it? Because, you know, if you go and buy a $40 or 60 or even sometimes a $200 bottle of whiskey, you don't want to bring it home and not enjoy it. What we're going to talk about today is not really how to drink whiskey, is a way for you to evaluate whiskeys and bourbons so that you always make sure that you are enjoying your bourbon the best that you possibly can, because there's so much to enjoy right now. So let's address those two questions first, right? What is the best whiskey and how do I drink whiskey? So the first one is, well, the whiskey you like best. Now you're gonna have a lot of folks come up to you at some point and say, oh, you should be drinking this, you should be drinking that. And you're gonna see on the shelves, right? We spend a lot of money on all of this stuff right here, the packaging. This is all designed so that you're gonna pick up a particular bourbon or whiskey and you're gonna drink that one first. What I'm telling you is, is if you want to find your best whiskey, you got to drink it blind. You have to take away all this packaging and stuff like that. Now you're asking, Rob, why would you try and tell me that, you know, why aren't you just trying to sell me horse soldier bourbon? I'm pretty confident that if you do this blind tasting, 50% of the people like us better than anything else they've had. So I'm perfectly happy to go up head to head with anybody else. But you got to drink it blind. And then you're just going to have to, unfortunately, drink a lot of whiskey until you can figure out what you like best. The second question is, how do I drink whiskey? Do I put in ice or water or whatever? You get plenty of folks who come up to you and say, oh, you're drinking your whiskey wrong. Oh, real men drink their whiskey neat. Well, if that's the case, then why is it that in every single whiskey bar in Scotland, at the end of the bar, there's a water tap? I mean, the Scots claim to have invented whiskey, right? So why would they have a water tap there? And why do all the master distillers say that you should probably be drinking at about 35% alcohol? And why do all the PhDs who do professional studies on this, yes, believe it or not, there's an entire science behind how to drink whiskey best. Why is it that they recommend that you add a little bit of water as well too? Well, guess what? The right way to drink whiskey is the way that you like it. I'm gonna make you all whiskey experts today, right now, because nobody can tell you how you like whiskey best. You are the expert of your own palate. What kind of pizza is better? Is it a pepperoni? Is it sausage? Is it mushroom, right? Who's right, who's wrong? Obviously the people who eat ham and pineapple, right? They're just out of there, right? But in terms of everybody else, everybody's palate's a little bit different. So that means that everybody's gonna like something different. And you're gonna like each one different. Because even on that sausage pizza, sometimes you want extra cheese and sometimes you don't. And sometimes you want a pizza that's a certain type from one pizzeria, but you want something else from somebody else. You have to try. So when we're talking about how to drink whiskey, I'm gonna show you a protocol today that you can use to evaluate all your whiskeys so you'll be able to answer those two questions and be a whiskey expert. So the protocol that I'm going to show you now is going to give you a way to evaluate whiskeys and bourbons in a way that strips away the packaging and what anybody else says, like that brother-in-law of yours who always is wrong anyways. So what I'd like you to do if you've got it, go ahead and pause if you want, if you'd like to do this along with me. You're just going to get a glass and pour a little bit of bourbon into it or whiskey or whatever kind of whiskey you have with you right now. And you're just going to pick it up and you're going to look at it. So it's the same kind of thing they do with wines, because what you want to do is you're looking for color. Now, you don't have to really worry about this so much with bourbons, because believe it or not, bourbon is our national spirit, and it is bourbon is probably the greatest spirit in the entire world, simply because there are so many standards, strict standards, on what it means to create a bourbon. With bourbon, you're not allowed to add any artificial coloring but you can with scotch, believe it or not, right? All those great expensive single malt scotches, you could add color to them if you want to. Now, most of the good manufacturers don't, but 
when you're evaluating a whiskey, the first thing you're doing is you're looking for a little bit of color there. It needs to be at least amber or more because that'll tell you how long it's been aged. When whiskey comes off the still, regardless of what kind, it's clear. So all of this color comes from the barrel. So the longer it is in the barrel, the darker, darker it will be. So you just wanna make sure you see some darkness up there. You can give it a swirl if you want to, kind of look at the legs. But the reason you really wanna give it a swirl is that this is what opens up the whiskey. Some people say whiskey opens up when you add water. That's not true. What this does is there's some heavy esters that sit on top. And when you do this, it breaks them up and allows some of the other great smells and flavors to come through. And that's really what we're doing. So the first step is we're gonna give it a swirl. We're gonna stick our nose in, but we're gonna keep our mouth open. This is really the only time that you're authorized to be a mouth breather. If you put your nose all the way in here and you keep your mouth closed, number one, you're gonna burn out your nose because this is like 45%, okay? But the other reason is, is that you'll notice if you keep your mouth open, you're actually gonna taste a little bit in the back of your throat. And you want that because that gives you a better idea of the flavor. So give it a swirl, give it a sniff. All right, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the next few steps. At the bottom here, you're gonna see a little code on how to get horse soldier bourbon at a 10% discount or anything else on the shop. So this is something we're only offering to members of Grunt Style. So if you would like to try horse soldier bourbon, please do so and watch us in our next segment where I'm gonna break down the process for you step by step.